Hi there. My name is Jeet. I'm, um, well, I used to be a recovering entrepreneur. I was actually clean for almost nine years, and I fell off the wagon. And here I am again. I'm not a venture capitalist. I'll talk more about that. Um, I'm going to talk about entrepreneurship tonight. Um, and I'm also mostly going to talk to entrepreneurs. So I apologize in advance, because despite the fact that we're on the web, and the whole world can see us, I'm going to be narrow casting uh, to people that um, I care a lot about and specifically I'm thinking a lot about. So for those of you who are not entrepreneurs or, or, or not, don't want to be entrepreneurs, it's only going to be 18 minutes. And for the, those of you who are already caught by the bug, it's your whole life anyway, so it makes no difference. Um, <laughs> let's start from the beginning of the story. <laughs> As an exaggeration, there's not even that many of us. Um, let's start right from the beginning, back in the mists of early human prehistory. Um, new archaeological evidence and common sense seems to indicate that the very first business was a startup. Um, <laughs> Now, there has been some debate, um, exciting debate, about the true nature of uh, the oldest profession. But I think I would project that it was very consumer focused. In those days, of course, the consumer was a very different beast, literally, probably ate you. But let's fast forward now to the present. And in all that time, so entrepreneurs have been around a long time. And it's, it's a pretty good reputation, right? I mean, it's good so far. Right? I mean, we uh, create value, and, and there's innovation, and uh, there are great changes in uh, productivity, and we create jobs, and we learn how to fling you know, vats of scalding oil over you know, the ramparts of castles, and those little plastic things that sit in men's collars. I mean, all good stuff. Um, waves of creative destruction washing over um, old ways of doing things. I mean, this stuff is fun, right? And on top of it, if you're good at it, maybe you know you get fame, fortune, and so on for the better practitioners of the entrepreneurial arts. So why so few of us, right? That's the question. One percent is an exaggeration. There are not that many. Once you start removing all the people who are you know starting a pizza parlor or, or perhaps a blog, um, and you know it's not a lot of people, but it's kind of an exciting field. Clearly, the Gen Y people, a lot of them want to be entrepreneurs. And the story, the mythology around entrepreneurs is, you know, we all know it, right? It's the, it's the exceptional person with incredible skills, a lonely genius slaving away in a basement, probably a social misfit because he's working too much, um, you know, certainly frustrated with the bureaucracy of the corporation. So he's working away in the basement. And one day, the eureka, eureka moment when he realizes that probably millions of others just like him who'd rather kill virtual aliens than actually go out and meet a real girl. Right? But, and that, that myth is, is nice. It's nice in media. Um, I think the reason that the number is so small is that it's just really risky. Right? Your chances of success are low. And uh, you know, for a linguist, explode and blow up are synonyms. But for an entrepreneur, you learn very quickly that they're very different outcomes. Um, so big mismatch. There's a very big mismatch. Who starts companies? Young people start companies. Right? One, because they don't have much to lose. They've got ideas, they've got enthusiasm and zest, and they've got a new way of looking at things, so they have, you know, they're not you know, sclerotic in the old way of doing things that businesses may have taught people with more experience. So they're the ones starting companies. Um, but unfortunately, they don't know much about stuff. Right? They know about what they've seen around them. Right? They know social networking now, and they know what their friends are doing. And they come up with this great idea about you know, something that they need themselves or their friends need. And there's nothing wrong with it. But it sort of misses out on a very big world of companies and businesses that they may not know anything about, which may be these companies that might in the future be acquiring their firm, or you know, markets that they don't even know are on the other side of the world that are going to buy millions and millions of, uh, of, of their product. So there's this big problem. So there's this bottom-up way of starting a business. Someone says, oh my gosh, I could have super collars, and so I'll put these little plastic things in my collar. And they build a business. And then years later, perhaps, after a lot of sacrifice and scraping up money from people, they suddenly find that you know, the business already exists. Or no one cares about it. Or no one's ever going to fund it. Or there's no ecosystem of companies out there 
that could possibly want to buy that company. Right? Last year, 10,000 companies were bought in the United States for a total of about a trillion dollars. So you know, do the math, about $100 million per company. 10,000 companies are bought. That's the exit for a successful entrepreneur. I mean, you might go public, certainly. Um, or you might just do great and make a ton of money and you stay in your company. But that's not the typical solution. So what I'm saying is this, this mismatch. The people who want to start companies can afford the risk because they've got nothing to lose. The people who know about the big business world and the markets that are out there and you know, the Joe Kesslers of the world, those people have a lot of experience, but they're not going to take the risk. Right? They're probably already doing pretty well, or they've already run a company. But they're certainly not going to go and slave away for years without any pay with a 1 in 100 chance of making it big. So there's this big, big mismatch in, um, in, uh, in, in, in the business. Um, and so the question is, you know, who plays the role in between? Where do venture capitalists fit into this? They certainly have a role. They play an economic role of actually eventually matching good ideas with a place where there might be a market, right? where there might be fundability. But that's a little late for the entrepreneur. So I'm not belittling the venture capitalist role. They bring money. They match you eventually, hopefully, to something that will succeed long term, because it's in their interest to do so. But the entrepreneurs already spent a number of years trying to get there, which maybe they could have, you know, they could have, they could have known better earlier. So you know, this, is the, this is the mismatch that, um, that seems to exist when we think about it. Um, so there has to be a better way. Um, imagine, and by the way, we've been thinking about this because we were thinking of starting new companies and, and we thought that things were kind of broken. Well, imagine that, um, how shall I express this? It's sort of like saying, you know, your mother probably said it best. It's just as easy to fall in love with a rich market. Right. Right. So the question is, what if you actually looked at the market and said, well, you know, there's, there's a bunch of companies in this field. This field is growing. The demographics are looking good. A lot of people are getting older, or a lot of people are looking for cars, or whatever it is. A big demographic movement might be changing. A great technology revolution may be happening. Perhaps regulatory changes are happening, which, which mean that it will be very big changes in the market. Those are trends, which are big trends, which is a rising tide. If you start a company where the things are going against you, your chances are even worse. If you're starting a company where things are all going great, I mean, even if you do not so well, maybe you'll still survive. So what if you looked at those things first? What if you looked at areas which were fundable in advance before you even put your zeal and enthusiasm and entrepreneurial spirit to work? So, you know, don't marry your first girlfriend. You know, date for a while. Look around. It's kind of the point of the, what, 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 what I'm talking about here. Um, ideally, what I'm saying is that there's the accidental and mystical, fun, wonderful entrepreneurial story that we hear about, wow, what a great story. He had this idea in the basement, and you know, it turned into a billion dollars. The point is, a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs. It's hard. It's risky. Perhaps the numbers that Joe was talking about indicates that even more people want to do it. So what if we took some of that great mystical stuff and now added professionalism to it. And that's what I'm talking about. What if we can create entrepreneurs that are like journeyman entrepreneurs? They're professional entrepreneurs. It's not just this one great idea they had. They're going to start four or five companies in their life. And it might not be their idea, but hopefully it's going to be a good one, and they're going to do it well. So um, yeah, 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 big talk, right? The great thing about being an entrepreneur, I don't have to bring any data to prove my points, right? On the other hand, we can actually go and try it. You know? And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, well, chalk it up to experience. So what my partners and I um, are going to try to do is, well, I'll walk you through it. So here's what we're going to try to do. Um, this, is, this are Joe and Matt and me. This is what we wear at work. <laughs> All professional entrepreneurs dress like this. Um, so we, um, we're doing a little experiment for the next five years. We set up shop recently in Cambridge near MIT. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to build 15 companies in the next five years. And we're going to start by looking at trends. So we're going to you know, look at the big things in the market. We're going to look at 
what are what are what are big demographic trends? What are big regulatory trends? What what are, what's happening that might affect a lot of people? Um, to do that, we have a, people dressed like this that are researchers, and uh, so we just started putting together this team. There's a bunch of them working in Cambridge right now, um, and we then once we find an interesting business, we actually find a super mentor, which is someone who knows a lot about that field, and we ask them, what do they think? What are good opportunities? Do you have any interesting ideas? And, and, then, and then we ask, you know, we get some entrepreneurs. These are young people who really want to be entrepreneurs, but it might not be their idea. We said, well, OK, you're in this sort of field. What do you think about a good idea? So we mix them up. We match them up. We start doing prototypes or designing or figuring what the business could be. And it could be in any business. It could be healthcare. It could be computers. It could be energy. We don't really care. We don't really know. We are going in as ignorant as possible in some ways, um, and then hoping for skill sets to join us. Um, so here's our gang, all color-coded in our dress. And so what we start doing is um, we start thinking of ideas. We call them germs. And we talk about two of them each week. And then so you know, in a month, we have six or eight of them, depending how well we work. Um, and then we choose two of the best ideas every month. And now we send them off to research to go think about it a little bit more. Is there competition? Has this already been done? Is this possible? Is there a business model behind it? Um, and then of those actions, every quarter, we choose two of those. And now we actually say, let's get an, a young entrepreneur to join us, and let's see if we can make this work. And now we give them a bunch of money to go at least figure out if this thing can really run. And this takes about six months. And then of those, um, uh, of those ideas, we take about two or three per, uh, per year and give them even more money, form a company, and off to the races. And we hope to basically eventually get them to, you know, other people give them money because we don't have that much money. Um, uh, we've got some. Um, and so eventually the idea is after about two years, we go find money from the venture capitalists. And hopefully, these companies are well enough thought out so their chances of success are better. We're trying to improve the chances for the entrepreneur, the professional journeyman entrepreneur. Um, so the big plan, try to do a lot of germs, of course, in five years. And eventually, well, eventually, either, you know, either they'll explode or some of them will just simply blow up. Thank you very much.